walking around this property, there's so many sounds of tools and so much activity going on. We have, you name it, every corner of this property has work being done on it right now. And the fact that we're only a few weeks out from opening is a little bit daunting. A big challenge with any construction project is sequencing. So making sure that we're doing all the right things at the right time, especially when we have a lot of different people involved. This is a case where we have trees that still need to come down because they're unhealthy or they're dying or they're dangerous. Yet we have 10 platforms now built right in the vicinity of needing to take them down, which means that now we have to take them down from the top, which means that we have to get a crane and it costs a lot more money to have to take a tree down that way than just chopping it down and letting it fall. Another thing we're working on this week is just cleaning up the property in general. There's so many leaves here. And I mean, a lot. <laughs> you should see the pile of leaves. It's like a mountain and we're not even halfway done with cleaning up. These two guys here have been at it for two days now and it seems like we haven't even made a dent. Look at all the leaves on the ground here. But when you do get it cleaned up and you start to see ground, and then we can start seeing the ferns come through and we can mulch areas and make sure that the area has the prop appropriate gravel. It's gonna look really nice. So it's gonna be well worth it. The story behind these guys is really awesome. The previous owner who owns the bar right up the street, Mountain House Tavern, he called me a few days ago and said, hey, there's somebody here and he has friends that are looking for work. Can you take them? And I said, heck yeah, send them over. So the next morning they were here, two days in, they are hard working and doing an amazing job. Sometimes when you're doing projects like this, you just gotta go out on a limb. You don't interview people, you can't. You, you know, there's so many things to do, like picking up leaves, like uh, putting in fencing, that you just gotta let people try and prove to you that they can do it. And frankly, they'll prove to you if they can't. And if you can't, it's an easy, see you later. So it's really great to get stuff early because in construction and in any project in general, delays, of one thing can cause a delay for the entire project. So one of the most critical parts of this project is the lodging, is the tents. And they're all here now, but the challenge that came with getting them early is that our shipping containers aren't here and also everything had to be hand unloaded. So needless to say, that was tens of thousands of pounds of material that had to be unloaded. Luckily, those guys that I ended up hiring from the bar came in really good handy because they showed up that morning and went right into it even though I didn't expect that to be the case, but luckily they were here and we could make use of them. Now that we have everything on hand, we're in really good shape. There's a handful of things that we'll still need to procure. There is furniture that needs to come in. Thank goodness that's not here yet because that would even be more of a problem and probably not as weatherproof as things like metal and canvas and things that are supposed to be outside the tents. Um, so we're gonna hold off on furniture until we get tents up then we'll bring furniture in, mattresses in. So as it arrives, we'll just put it right into the tents. Luckily and unluckily, we haven't had rain for a long time. We're in like a really bad drought and everything here is really, really dry. I mean, one of my biggest fears is fire. So we're not gonna do any fires here, even though there's a lot of like brush and leaves that frankly would be easier to dispose of by burning. Although that's not really a great way in my opinion. Um, that's how people up here usually do dispose of excess material like that. Um, so I've told everybody no burning. A, I don't love the uh, environmental impact, but also let's not burn out. <laughs> let's not burn down our forest right now. The dome tents arrived and that is an interesting conundrum we find ourselves in because the directions that the dome tents came with, I gotta find them here. The directions are hilarious. These are our instructions. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so you got it under control then, right? Yeah, sure, no yeah. problem. <laughs> it looks like another language. Granted, yes, they were made overseas, but the language that this direction is is not even a human language. It looks alien. And uh, honestly, making these dome tents is gonna be a big challenge for us. I'm gonna put a call to action out on our social media, and hopefully we're gonna find people that have some experience with building these. I was a little bit naive thinking that these would just arrive and it would be almost like Ikea. We just throw these up and we get going at it. So here are the geodesic dome setups. And although it looks like it's not a ton of material, when you come over here, it gets a little bit more daunting. So all of those are individual poles, metal poles. And then all of these are bits and bolts and you name it, I don't even know what this is. I mean, what do you suppose that is? Looks like something you would hang a curtain from. 
I'm sure it has to do with hanging the canvas of some sort. All these brackets, holy cow. So we have our work cut out for us. Definitely is not Ikea. I guess that's a good thing. No offense, Ikea, but uh, Ikea, you should make geodesic domes. The directions would have been so much better. So as we've talked about, we are doing solar power for the geodesic domes. That's incredibly exciting. Joanna and I really love the idea of solar. It's super aligned with our beliefs. It's aligned with our sustainability initiatives over our course of our career. And the fact that it's from the earth and from the sun is just, it doesn't, you can't debate it. It's the same electricity. The, the appliance doesn't care where it comes from as long as we get enough of it. And that's the key. So time will tell once we get the actual solar arrays in here and set up whether or not we're gonna be able to power things. Personally, I've been hard at work to try to figure out just how to get the electricity over to the tents. So one of the things that I've been working on today is the trenching of all of the wires. And that's why my hands are like black. But basically getting the wires from the pump house over to the geodesic domes. And the pump house is where we're gonna be storing the energy. And that energy is gonna be harnessed from the sun, which is gonna be on the shipping containers right behind the pump house. So we have the plan in place. Everything's moving forward in that direction. The variables that still have to come into place is the shipping containers get delivered next week. Then we gotta figure out the solar arrays. We haven't ordered the solar arrays and we're still in the final stages of deciding what battery system we're gonna use. Once those decisions have been made, we'll order everything and hopefully the week or two prior to opening, really as in the next few weeks, we'll get everything up. Everything will be already wired, ready to be connected and power on. I mean, that's, that's the hope, right? First time doing solar, first time opening a campground, definitely, I wish it was as easy as a snap of the fingers, but I guess we'll see in a few weeks. So these are the six lines that are gonna deliver power to the geodesic domes. They're gonna get their power from a battery system right here, which is the pump house. And then they're gonna get charge. The batteries are gonna get charged from solar arrays that are right here that are then gonna deliver the electricity in DC form, which is something I've learned, to the batteries, which are then gonna invert it and transition it, or transform it rather, into AC power, which then goes out those lines to the geodesic domes. And that, folks, is your electrical tutorial today from yours truly, Brian Linton. You know, guys, I, uh, I'm on a pretty mean tractor. I can, I can dig a hole better than the best of us and uh, pretty proud of these, uh, these holes here other than all the rocks. So I'm gonna get some clean backfill and make sure that we get it nice and deep. It's gonna be 18 inches and everything is gonna be hunky-dory once we get these filled in. Do you wanna know the beautiful thing? This entire system is off the grid. As you can see, there's no wires coming in here from overhead. That damn transformer that couldn't supply us enough electricity is nice and lonely sitting out on the street there. And we'll be sitting in here with our solar laughing at that, at that device as we power ourselves from the sun. So it, it was my mistake, but I didn't give specific directions to the guy that was gonna be spreading out the gravel here to make the pad for the shipping containers where the solar panels are gonna go. And the issue is, is that we're a little bit too close to these trees over here. And that means the afternoon sun is gonna have a little bit of shade on those shipping containers. The good news is we have plenty of space right next to this pad to expand it. And so I just got another load of rock delivered and I've rented a tractor and we're doing a bunch of stuff around the property this week. So we have guys using it to dig fence post holes right now. But once everybody goes home, because they all leave around five o'clock, since we rented the tractor, I gotta run it as long as I possibly can, really until it gets dark out. So I'll be out here after everybody leaves, spreading in that load of gravel, pretty big size stone as the base layer for then adding additional gravel on top. And then ultimately on Monday, we're gonna get our shipping containers on top of it. Mm -hmm.